In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hi, welcome to the In The Last Days television program with myself, Martin Blackham. Natalie's behind the scenes today. She says hello to you. We are the program that looks at Israel, the news and features from Israel. And one of the big stories that's happening in the news at the moment was the terrorist attack on the French train, which involved uh, a Moroccan, an Islamic terrorist who uh, was stopped by a United States airman and his friends from carrying out a terrible terrorist attack. And what happened uh, in today's news, this is the Daily Telegraph, we can cap, uh, you can see uh, the terrorists being taken uh, by French policemen to the court. What's happened is that we've discovered that he is actually working for ISIS. So ISIS is really in the news and we have a very special guest in the studio today to talk about ISIS, to talk about what's happening in the Islamic world, to talk about Arabic affairs. And uh, we have Dr. Mordecai Kader in the studio. Thank you so much for coming nice in you, today. Martin. You've, come, you've uh, you're making a special effort to come in. Uh, Dr. Mordecai uh, Kader is the uh, a senior lecturer in the Department of Arabic Studies at Bar Ilan University. He's a speaker with the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies. He served with the Israeli Army Military Intelligence 25 years, where he specialized in Islamic groups, and hence the reason with uh, today's news about ISIS, the political discourse of Arab countries. He's currently a lieutenant colonel in the Israeli Army Reserves and is thoroughly familiar with the Arab media in real time. Uh, the Los Angeles Times' Edmund Sanders described him as one of the few Arabic-speaking Israeli pundits seen on Arab satellite channels defending Israel. So it's really great to have you in the studio. My pleasure thank, and my honor. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. And um, it's, a, it's a huge topic, but I, I, the, the, the topic of ISIS and the Islamic State. Uh, but maybe you can, as, as, we've, uh, as we're um, looking at the story, what happened on the, uh, the train, uh, maybe you can give us an, uh, um, our, our viewers an update as to what's happening with the Islamic State and uh, what kind of a threat is it uh, uh, to not just the nations around it, but to Israel and to the West? Well, as we speak now in August uh, 2015, the Islamic State is a l large area. It's like 15 times the state of Israel. Not that the state of Israel is such a big country, but 15 times, it's like 15 times uh, New Jersey. So um, uh, they're already like on like a quarter of Iraq and a half or even more than half of Syria. These two dysfunctional countries actually fell prey to this uh, newly born Islamic State. But we have always to bear in mind that this newly born Islamic State is actually functioning or walking on the footsteps of the ancient Islam in the 7th century. They actually imitate uh, the ways how that state in the 7th century was functioning. Those people in the 7th century were beheading people, so th these are beheading people today. Those people were burning their enemies, these are burning their enemies as well. Those people were destroying all the remnants of the former cultures like the Babylons and the Assyriacs and the Christians, of course, the Byzantine Empire, they do the same thing today to churches, to monasteries, and to sanctuaries of the Babylonians and the Assyriacs, as we heard recently in the city of Tadmor, and the Greeks, of course, and the Romans, all the, all the cultures which presided, which were before uh, 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 Islam, should be destroyed and they do it as their forefathers did in the 7th century. Those were chopping hands of thieves in the 7th century. This is what they do today. Those were stoning women in the streets if they went astray. The same thing is being done today. Those were uh, uh, selling to slavery infidels' daughters. This is the same thing which they do today. It means every single characteristic of the Islamic state of yore of the 7th and 8th century they are doing today. It's for them, it's actually the returning of Islam to the cradle. 
to the first days of Islam, the glorious days when Allah gave the Muslims, all the countries and all the nations, um, the Byzantine Empire, the Persian Empire, and all the kingdoms which they were, were in North Africa and wherever they were, and they, are, they have all the permission to take the whole world. Actually, the whole world appears on their coins, which they already issued. So, uh, because they don't uh, recognize any borders, because the borders were marked by the infidels, while the world was created as one single world by the one single God who, had, who has, should have only one single religion under one single caliph, as they already have. So this is their mindset, and this is where they try to take the world to. And if on the way there are some kingdoms or some states like the United Kingdom or other states which are resisting this trend, they should be exterminated. And, and this is the idea which unfortunately is so attractive to too many Muslims. I'm, I'm not saying, definitely I'm not saying that all the Muslims are uh, participating in this kind of thinking. N not even half of them, not even a third. But if, if only 1% of the Muslim world takes uh, these ideas seriously, we already have a million and a half jihadists. Or even more because we have billion and a half Muslims in the world. So one of thousand gives us million and a half. Million and a half jihadists in the world are too many. Nineteen were enough to stage the September 11, 2001. Do Only you, nineteen. Do you, do you think there's a misunderstanding about Islam in the West? Because some people see it just as another religion or another uh, organization or another way of, of politics but do you think there's a misunderstanding that the serious nature that they take jihad in the sense that they don't just carry out terrorist attacks like we saw on the French train but they're also involved in other uh, jihad means any way of uh, fighting the infidel well Islam is not only a religion Islam is a way of life scheme of life which controls the economy politics, state, whatever. There is nothing in the world uh, which Islam doesn't have what to say about. So Islam is on, it's not only a religion which controls the relation between men, men and God. It's not only this, like Christianity or Judaism in most parts. Islam is something which uh, uh, is a comprehensive way of thinking about the whole world, politics, statehood, and everything else. So this is why it is a religion, but not only. So it has to be viewed as, as such. However, Islam has everything in it. Love and hate, peace and war, violence and acceptance. It is everything. There is no radical Islam versus moderate Islam because there is no radical Quran versus moderate Quran or radical Hadith or a tradition versus a moderate one or a radical history of Islam versus another history which is much more modern. There is, not, not, there is one Islam, one Quran, one Hadith, one history, one ideology. However, there are all kinds of uh, array or, or large array of ideas in the Quran already. There is a verse which says, La ikraha fi deen means no compulsion in religion, which is a very nice idea. You cannot impose anything on others. But on the other side, there are verses in the Quran which incite you to go to fight for Islam. So th th there is everything in the, in the Quran, in the Hadith, in the history, in the ideology, whatever. There are radical people and there are moderate people. Radical people take from the sources the verses and the ideas which uh, fit their culture. And they actually tailor their Islamic garment out of these materials, of the radical materials. And they are very good Muslims because they follow the ideas which appear in the Quran, which, which fit their personality. While moderate people, and there are many moderate Muslims, good people, peaceful people who, who would do nothing wrong, will not kill even a mosquito. And they tailor their Islam from the moderate ideas which appear in the Quran, in the Hadith. So Islam is everything in it. Uh, so so this was, there is no radical Islam versus moderate Islam. There are radical people versus moderate people. 
Now the question is, how many of those are radical and how, how many of those are, are uh, 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 moderate? And this is where the problem is, because organizations like the Islamic State, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Hezbollah, all these are groupings of people who share the same ideology of radical ideology which they take from their sources. And while they, they have this organization, they are very, very dangerous because now they are organized. They have weapons, they have money, they have all the means to export their kind of behavior and ideology to other parts of Muslims and others. Uh, the first target for them are Muslims, the, the moderate Muslims, who do not share the same ideas. This is why I think like 95% of the victims of the radical Muslims are moderate Muslims. You can see it in Iraq, you can see it in Syria, you can see it in Libya, and many, many other places. Yet there are other victims who are Christians, Jews, Yazidis, as they sell their daughters to, today, uh, the, the Yazidi daughters, to, to, to slavery after they kill the men. So this is the, what the, the, today the radical Muslims are doing in the world, in organizations like Hamas, all these organizations. And uh, they share more or less the same ideas which are taken from the Islamic sources, which have everything in it. Now, one of the, one of the problems with the media because we're in a media war, one of the problems in the media is the fact that uh, in Islam, there's a, um, it's not a requirement, but there's a, um, a possibility of lying for Islam. In other words, of not uh, presenting the truth, not telling the, the facts as they are uh, to the unbeliever, to the infidel. You, it, there's a, an Islamic expression. Takiyah. That's it, yes. And if, with that, you're allowed to, for the sake of Islam, um, to misrepresent or to falsify facts and, and news. Do you, do you think that is something that Definitely. is happening? First of all, they manipulate the, the media. Uh, as everybody knows, what happened in Gaza in the last summer when we were fighting Hamas, uh, journalists were not allowed to talk about missiles which they were launching against us. And wh whoever journalist who would talk about this would be ousted, in the good case, from Gaza because Hamas were controlling the media. So by showing a picture as if only Israel attacks Gaza, while the Gazans are those poor people who do nothing, and this is the picture which the world received from the media, this is actually lying, because they were shooting at us for years, thousands of missiles. I, I'm not sure that uh, the United Kingdom would allow even one missile to fall on London, or even on open spaces. Uh, from, let's say, France or another um, Virgin Islands or whatever, uh, uh, on Britain. Not even, not even one. What would Britain do to that country which will launch one missile onto Britain? And we have to suffer, what, for years with thousands of missiles? But when the media doesn't bring it, it's some kind of changing the reality or um, um, diverting the, 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 the reality to, to a way that only Israel is the bad guy in the Middle East, while all those uh, organizations of, of, of uh, radical Muslims are uh, peace uh, seekers. Uh, and, and this is the, actually the, 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 the picture which, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the media broadcast. However, it doesn't, it, it, it is still until today. Uh, only recently, David Cameron gave a, an order to the BBC not to call the, the ISIS or the Islamic State in this name, Islamic State, but to change it, I think, to the organization, the so-called uh, uh, the Islamic State, means to reduce the fact that this is a state, while the Islamic State is a state. It has a space, much bigger than Israel. It has an army. It has a police, ministries, Ministry of Health, Ministry of, of, of Labor, um, 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 a broadcasting authority, and every organ which a state needs, they have. So something which looks like a state, acts like a state, and quacks like a state, it is a state. It is not, it is not an organization anymore. And by sticking the head into the sand, as Cameron wants, by not calling it a state, it is some kind of to dope the world, not to see it in order not to act. Because everybody, I believe 
also the British government is afraid. Because if one soldier will fall into the hands of those and will be slaughtered in front of a camera, this will cause a political problem in Britain because everybody will ask, hey, what are you doing there? So in order not to be forced to send the British army like boots on the ground to deal with this Islamic State, they try not to call it a state. However, you cannot get rid of it by bombing from the air. There is no way. If you have to get rid of them, you have to send many boots on the ground to look for them in every cellar, in every apartment, in every ditch, in everywhere where they hide, to catch them and to put them into the place which they deserve, either into the grave or behind the bars, like Guantanamo or Guantanamo-like places. This is the only way how to solve the problem which is named the Islamic State. And the later the world does it, the higher would be the price. Because uh, and the at the moment, the Islamic State is also not just uh, in Syria, but they're threatening on the border, I believe, of Lebanon. I mean, Egypt, we saw missiles fired by uh, ISIS into Israel. Uh, uh, Libya, I believe that ISIS are, are there. Already are there. America, there were attacks. The Boko Haram uh, in Nigeria already pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. They're, they're in Lebanon, they are, they are in many places. Look, in Kosovo, uh, former Yugoslavia, uh, the, the, the capital of course is Pristina. Pristina is, is drinking a water from a water reserve. Few weeks ago, they caught four people with cans of poison running to this water reserve in order to poison 200,000 people who live in Pristina. And there were people of the Islamic State. This is something awful. You know, what happened to those people who, who, drink, come, who wake up in the morning to drink water and they all drop dead? This is something, you know, chemi 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 chemical warfare. Already we see those people who identify with this uh, Islamic State. Uh, we saw the beheadings in France. We saw the beheading in London. We saw the beheading in Oklahoma in the United States. It becomes a fashion. And this is the dreadful thing, because through the social media and the regular media, un unfortunately, too many Muslims in the world look at this and say, hey, this is the winning card. This is the way how to treat the infidels. This is how the way, the way how to defeat Britain after what Britain did to us for centuries by colonizing us, by establishing the state of Israel, by, by cutting us to pieces named states or Dwaylat, as they say in Arabic, small states, in order to weaken us. And, and, and the fact that Britain actually took those dictators to control us in Egypt, wherever they are, in, in Jordan, the Hashemite family and others, and actually Britain and the United States and France and all those colonizers actually devastated us. And this is why we now have to go to jihad in order to take revenge against all those infidels and the Christians who uh, invaded us. And, and occupied us and uh, uh, exploited our resources, and now we have to fight back. And this is actually what we see today, and the Islamic State will be the solution, will be the way how to treat the infidels, to slaughter them and to topple them and to poison them and to shoot in, the, in, their, in their trains and in their restaurants and in their shops and whatever, kosher, uh, 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 hyper kosher, and all these things. This is the only way, the winning card. And unfortunately, too many Muslims in the world fall in love with this idea, and especially with this mod modus modi operandi. And of course, if uh, you, you know, you're a Muslim and you go to the mosque, and uh, th this is this kind of story of someone who's trying to do a like the French terrorist on the train, something like that is something to be talking about. Now, one of the things, Mordecai, that I'm very interested in is I think you're the first guest we've ever had who's been on Al Jazeera. So maybe in Arabic, <laughs> in Arabic yeah, and BBC in Arabic as well. Yeah. Um, maybe you can tell us a bit about what that was like because that that must have been. Are you do that regular? Do you speak with them regularly or? Um? When 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 the problem about Israel and its neighbors are in the news. So it's more regularly, but when the problems are in Syria and Iraq, uh, Israel and, Pal and the Palestinian issue is actually in the margin. 
So when there was the Gaza war, they would have been more right. wanting to speak or, to you? Whenever, whenever there is something here. Uh, they actually, they don't like, they don't like me to say the least. Uh, they invite me when, uh, in, mainly in order to abuse me uh, on air. And they do it in, ver in various ways by, by asking nasty questions and uh, all kinds of sermons as a, as a question, all these things. Um, I, once they recorded me for, uh, for something and they edited in a way which uh, was dreadful you know, by editing. So I don't give them any more uh, recorded interviews, only live. However, they know how to manipulate live rubble as well by not letting me hear the other side in a debate. That's what they do, this Al Jazeera, this is an invention of Al Jazeera. You are in the debate, in the remote uh, studio, and you don't hear the other side. So I, I told them that uh, next time, only in the studio, in their studio in Qatar, and uh, they should take me there by business. But never mind. But it's, I'm not the issue. The issue is that Al Jazeera actually is a media jihad against the Arab uh, leaders, or not the rulers, media jihad against Israel, media jihad against Christianity and the West, and uh, media jihad in order to promote the Muslim Brotherhood. This is their agenda. And around this agenda, everything revolves. And uh, all the rest is, is, they have nothing with truth. Nothing connected with the truth. Everything there is manipulated to serve their agenda. And, Algeria, and I think that Al Jazeera should be kicked out from every uh, 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 democratic state because they don't adhere to any rules of media or any uh, 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 conception of, or concept of media, real media, because they are lying, lying. And uh, they're applying the, the Islamic, um, I, 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 they, I, I, what we were talking they're about, they're of, they're uh, that you can lie to the infidel. They, act, they actually, the Takia, they actually were behind the Arab Spring. They pushed the people to the streets to topple um, um, Ben Ali in Tunisia, Mubarak in Egypt, Assad in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Syria, uh, uh, Ali Ahmed Abdullah Saleh in, uh, in Yemen, in Bahrain as well. They were the inciting power behind those Arab uh, 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 masses which burst into the streets as if to demand uh, freedom, but what they gained is mass killing uh, as Qatar uh, 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 designed for them. Uh, they actually succeeded to put the Muslim Brotherhood in the head of Egypt because Morsi for a year was their achievement as the president. However, when they knew, when the Emir of Qatar, when he knew that Morsi will be ousted in July 2013, he resigned like a week before. He didn't want to be there when his failure will be obvious. So he put his son to succeed him. And this is what proves that he was behind, means the Emir, the former Emir of Qatar, the father of the current Emir of Qatar. He was behind all this wave which was designed to put the Muslim Brotherhood in power, but what it brought is the Islamic State, which is a derivative of the Muslim Brotherhood. And people think that, there are some people who think that Muslim Brotherhood is a peaceful uh, charity organization. They don't understand that the Muslim Brotherhood is the womb from which all the terrorist organizations of today, Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, Boko Haram, the Ansar Bayt al Magdis in Sinai, all of these, these are the sons and the grandsons of this organization, uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. And uh, unfortunately, there are people who think that Muslim Brotherhood are good, peaceful charity organization. And uh, Al Jazeera, uh, would you say is uh, it's like propaganda? They're, they're putting out the, their message, which they believe is right. But uh, but the problem is, I, I I think Mordecai is that in the West we have the impression that when people do the news, present the news, that the, it's truthful, that it's a, a truthful representation of uh, uh, of events that are happening. We we're not used to, yeah. I think not since the Second World War have, with the Nazis doing the propaganda, has there been so much? Well, this is another problem which is connected to the West because the West usually tries to look at others, especially Muslims, Arabs, in, uh, 
through Western eyes, through Western culture, through Western lens, as if the whole world thinks in the same way, the, the old world is the same uh, culture, everybody wants the same thing, everybody likes the same thing, everybody dislikes the same thing, and this is why the West tend to think that if you only do this, this and that, which works in this, everything will be okay in the other side. They don't understand that there are different cultures in the world. They don't recognize other cultures. And they don't learn about... How many decision makers in the West know Arabic in, in, in a way that they, they can understand the Arabic culture? They don't understand the Iranian uh, culture. This is why they fell in this trap which led them to the, to the, uh, to the deal with Iran. Uh, they actually failed totally. The, Britain and the United States and Russia and China and all those who si signed on this uh, were misled into a trap by the Iranians who are experts in the bizarre culture of the Middle East. And uh, they are rookies. And, and, and this is why the Iranians succeeded to defeat them in the negotiation field because they know the rules of the Middle Eastern game while the Westerners are blind in this, in this area because they think from, well, they say, so they must mean it. Because when we say, they mean, we mean what we say. So they sh definitely are like us and they also mean what they say. They don't understand that in the Middle East, you say one thing and you mean, you, you mean the opposite in some cases. So uh, th this is the, the, the real problem. And, and, and this is unfortunately uh, what happens when people, politicians, who are running the West uh, are oblivious of other cultures. They don't want to learn, they don't want they know, don't learn the languages. Look, you cannot understand the French without French. You cannot understand the Dutch without Dutch. You cannot understand the Italians without Italian. The same way you cannot understand Arabs without Arabic and Persian without, per without Persian. We, we've thing. run out of time, uh, Mordecai. Thank you so much for coming into the studio this week. And uh, thank you uh, for sharing with us about uh, some of the issues uh, that we are facing with the Islamic State and uh, uh, the threat of Islam and terrorism. Uh, if you'd like to email us, don't forget you can email us at info at in the last days dot com. And remember, we're living in the last days. You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In The Last Days. Media in real time. Uh, the Los Angeles Times' Edmund Sanders described him as one of the few Arabic-speaking Israeli pundits seen on Arab satellite channels defending Israel. So it's really great to have you in the studio. My pleasure thank, and my honor. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. And um, it's a it's a huge topic, but I, I the 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 topic of ISIS and the Islamic State. Uh, but maybe you can, as as we've uh, as we're um, looking at the story what happened on the, uh, the train. Uh, maybe you can give us a, 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 um, our, our viewers an update as to what's happening with the Islamic State and uh, what kind of a threat is it uh, uh, to not just the nations around it, but to Israel and to the West? Well, as we speak now in August uh, 2015, the Islamic State is a l large area. It's like 15 times the state of Israel. Not that the state of Israel is such a big country, but 15 times, it's like 15 times uh, New Jersey. So um, uh, they're already like on like a quarter of Iraq and a half or even more than half of Syria. These two dysfunctional countries actually fell prey to this uh, newly born Islamic State. But 
we have always to bear in mind that this newly born Islamic State is actually functioning or walking on the footsteps of the ancient Islam in the 7th century. They actually imitate uh, the ways how that state in the 7th century was functioning. Those people in the 7th century were beheading people, so th these are beheading people today. Those people were burning their enemies, these are burning their enemies as well. Those people were this which uh, uh, is a comprehensive way of thinking about the whole world, politics, statehood, and everything else. So this is why it is a religion, but not only. So it has to be viewed as, as such. However, Islam has everything in it. Love and hate, peace and war, violence and acceptance. It is everything. There is no radical Islam versus moderate Islam because there is no radical Quran versus moderate Quran or radical Hadith or tradition versus a moderate one or a radical history of Islam versus another history which is much more modern. There is, not, not, there is one Islam, one Quran, one Hadith, one history, one ideology. However, there are all kinds of uh, array or, or large array of ideas in the Quran already. There is a verse which says, La ikraha fi din means no compulsion in religion, which is a very nice idea. You cannot impose anything on others. But on the other side, there are verses in the Quran which incite you to go to fight for Islam. So th th there is everything in the, in the Quran, in the Hadith, in the history, in the ideology, whatever. There are radical people and there are moderate people. Radical people take from the sources the verses and the ideas which uh, fit their culture. And they actually tailor their Islamic garment out of these materials, of the radical materials. And they are very good Muslims because they follow the ideas which appear in the Quran, which, which fit their personality. While moderate people, and there are many moderate Muslims, good people, peaceful people who, who, who do nothing. In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hi, welcome to the In The Last Days television program with myself, Martin Blackham. Natalie's behind the scenes today. She says hello to you. We are the program that looks at Israel, the news and features from Israel. And one of the big stories that's happening in the news at the moment was the terrorist attack on the French train, which involved uh, a Moroccan, an Islamic terrorist, who uh, was stopped by a United States airman and his friends from carrying out a terrible terrorist attack. And what happened uh, in today's news, this is the Daily Telegraph, we can cap, uh, you can see uh, the terrorists being taken uh, by French policemen to the court. What's happened is that we've discovered that he is actually working for ISIS. So ISIS is really in the news and we have a very special guest in the studio today to talk about ISIS, to talk about what's happening in the Islamic world, to talk about Arabic affairs. And uh, we have Dr. Mordecai Kada in the studio. Thank you so much for coming nice in today. You, you've uh, you're making a special effort to come in. Uh, Dr. Mordecai uh, Kader is the uh, a senior lecturer in the Department of Arabic Studies at Bar Ilan University. He's a speaker with the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies. He served with the Israeli Army Military Intelligence 25 years, where he specialized in Islamic groups, and hence the reason with uh, today's news about ISIS, the political discourse of Arab countries. He's currently a lieutenant colonel in the Israeli Army Reserves and is thoroughly familiar with the Arab. They try to take the world too. And if on the way there are some kingdoms or some states like the United Kingdom or other states which are resisting this trend, they should be exterminated. And, and this is the idea which unfortunately is so attractive to too many Muslims. I'm, I'm not saying, definitely I'm not saying that all the Muslims are uh, participating in this kind of thinking. N not even half of them, not even a third. But if, if only 1% of the Muslim world 
takes uh, these ideas seriously, we already have million and a half jihadists, or even more because we have billion and a half Muslims in the world. So one of thousand gives us million and a half. Million and a half jihadists in the world are too many. 19 were enough to stage the September 11, 2001. Do you, do, you, do you think there's a misunderstanding about Islam in the West? Because some people see it just as another religion or another uh, organization or another way of, of politics. But do you think there's a misunderstanding that the serious nature that they take jihad in the sense that they don't just carry out terrorist attacks like we saw on the French train, but they're also involved in other... Uh, jihad means any way of uh, fighting the infidel. Well, Islam is not only a religion. Islam is a way of life, scheme of life, which controls the economy, politics, state, whatever. There is nothing in the world uh, which Islam doesn't have what to say about. So Islam is on, it's not only a religion which controls the relation between men, men and God. It's not only this, like Christianity or Judaism in most parts. Islam is something destroying all the remnants of the former cultures like the Babylons and the Assyriacs and the Christians, of course, the Byzantine Empire, they do the same thing today to churches, to monasteries, and to sanctuaries of the Babylonians and the Assyriacs, as we heard recently in the city of Tadmor, and the Greeks, of course, and the Romans, all the, all the cultures which presided, which were before uh, 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 Islam, should be destroyed and they do it as their forefathers did in the 7th century. Those were chopping hands of thieves in the 7th century. This is what they do today. Those were stoning women in the streets if they went astray. The same thing is being done today. Those were uh, uh, selling to slavery infidels' daughters. This is the same thing which they do today. It means every single characteristic of the Islamic state of your, of the 7th and 8th century, they are doing today. It's for them, it's actually the returning of Islam to the cradle, to the first days of Islam, the glorious days when Allah gave the Muslims, all the countries and all the nations, um, the Byzantine Empire, the Persian Empire, and all the kingdoms which they were, were in North Africa and wherever they were, and they, are, they have all the permission to take the whole world Actually, the whole world appears on their coins, which they already issued. So, uh, because they don't uh, recognize any borders, because the borders were marked by the infidels, while the world was created as one single world by the one single God, who had, who has, should have only one single religion, under one single caliph, as they already have. So, this is their mindset, and this is where.